We're looking at the ZenBook S16 OLED. To me, this is basically like the trimmed down ASUS ProArt P16. I'm gonna do a full head-to-head -head review between those two devices in another video. But for now, we're gonna focus solely on the ZenBook S16 OLED, its features, its functionality, and who this laptop might be the best for. Now, for me, this laptop would be a fantastic pick for digital artists, graphic designers, and even some 1080p and 4K video editors. And also, as a side note, this would be a great competitor of the Samsung Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360, and I'll put those two head-to-head -head as well. There's, there's all kinds of head-to-head -head videos that always need to happen. Now, let's go ahead and check out the build quality and usability of this laptop first. Now, as you can see, we have this like nice matte top cover. You can see the Asus ZenBook S16 is razor thin. You can see the weight and thickness coming up on the screen. However, you have awesome port connectivity. You have HDMI to USB Type-C, headphone jack, and on the other side, you have an SD card reader and a USB Type-A. Now keep in mind, you're going to have to sacrifice one of your USB-Cs for a charger port. Now, as we flip the laptop over, looking at the bottom cover, you can see, man, this is where I really like this device, even compared to the P16. You can see that we have this nice rounded edge along the back. The P16 cuts off really sharply. It has this really like hard edge and it makes this little sharp spot. Doesn't have that on the S16 OLED. Absolutely love it. It's a great device in regards to like the nice thin and light build quality of this thing. It can awesome on the go device. This reminds me a lot of the Apple MacBook Air 15 that I have. It's got the huge trackpad, super thin, super on the go friendly. And we're going to check out the battery life here in just a minute as well. Um, next thing I want to take a look at, of course, is the upgrade path. That is one area that you're actually going to have some decent upgrade path. Uh, you won't be able to upgrade the RAM, but there is an M.2 slot available to be swapped out. This comes with the standard one terabyte, but you can swap that out to boot drive to add additional storage to this device. Um, if you are, you know, very tech savvy and being able to, you know, reinstall Microsoft on your device and, and all that jazz. So good upgrade path for this laptop. And then it comes with 32 gigs of RAM is great for performance. Now, the next thing I want to take a look at is I'm going to go ahead and open and close the lid here. You can see it's a bit of a hard grab to get started. But once you get started, it opens and closes smoothly, even though this is a pretty heavy device. You can see that the hinge stops there at about the 45. It makes it pop up. Um, now, if I go ahead and I check out the uh, screen bounce, there's a little bit of screen bounce, but you can see it stops pretty quickly. And then screen flex, not a lot of screen flex. So Really, this is quickly becoming one of my more favorite devices. And actually, the the there's one, two, three, four points where the hinge connects. And then also, the design of this hinge is held together in one solid piece. And so it really is a nice, sturdy hinge. Now, one thing that really threw me off, I'm going to go ahead and turn this device. This, to me, looks like it should be a power button, but it's not. <laughs> the power button's right here. So I was going to push that because I'm like, oh, that should be the power button, right? It's like that little logo, because sometimes, you know, devices do that. They like hide power buttons under little things, but it's not. But nice large trackpad, really nice press, no rattle. So really great job on the trackpad of this device. And I just popped open Photoshop. This display is pen compatible. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So keep that in mind. Okay, now let's look at the keyboard. The keyboard is very classic of your Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G16. So it's a very similar keyboard. I mean, if you put the two devices side by side, which I'm not going to at the moment, but if you did, um, you would see almost this identical keyboard. So very similar. We have our toggle keys here, full size shift keys, enter key, really nice medium key travel. So it's a solid keyboard. I really have no complaints. Like it doesn't get in the way. It doesn't overly impress me. It's just a good keyboard. Here's a sample I'm using the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear what they sound like in use. Okay, next thing is there's a webcam on the top bezel. Here's a sample of the webcam so you can see and hear what that sounds like for yourself. This is the webcam on the Asus ZenBook S16 OLED and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now this is a glossy OLED display. So burn my saddles, it's gonna be pretty reflective. However, the dark's gonna be nice and dark. You're gonna have sharp, strong colors and it looks very, very nice. Now for the display, this is a 2880 by 1800 at 60 Hertz. That's what the actual system information says. However, on their website, they say that it's 120 Hertz. So I'm not quite sure. Take that for what it is. You can comment below if you're smarter than me and you know what's going on. Maybe I just have the 120 Hertz version. I don't know. 
Now we have 383 nits at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI-P3 at a delta E of 0.75. Okay, so really good, sharp, color accurate display. Now let's talk about the pen functionality because that is a really nice hidden surprise in this device. All right, so we're looking at the pen connectivity on the Asus ZenBook S16 OLED. Keep in mind the Asus 2.0 pen, which is an MPP, Microsoft Pen Protocol technology is not included with the ZenBooks. You have to order a pen separately. Now, I have been seeing that there's some devices that have better pen sensitivity than others. I would say the ZenBook is one that has really good pen sensitivity. Um, you can see here that it can create really nice thick to light strokes. So you can see we have a thick stroke here as I push harder and it, it tailors off there at the end. Some pens, and screen combinations, for instance, like the PZ13, you go and you push hard and then you release and it doesn't tail off at all. So I'm gonna push hard and then release and you can see it, it tails off. Um, this one tails off pretty nicely. I wouldn't say that this is the best display um, for sensitivity. However, it does give you a nice variety. You can see I can do a really nice light stroke here. I can do a heavy to light stroke and it tails off. Um, this is gonna take uh, some getting used to, like any new form of um, art that you might be be experimenting with. Um, so know that this is not gonna to feel totally natural right off the bat, but you can see as I do these heavy to light strokes, depending on how I push, you can see there I got a nice light, thick to light stroke. You can see here, I didn't get that. So there is a little bit of inconsistency, I would say, and it takes some getting used to as far as producing the look that you're going for. Let's see, I got, there we go. That, see, that's the look I was going for, that nice heavy to light stroke. Um, so it's just, you know, it is what it is. Um, AES technology, that's gonna be what's used in like Wacom tablets. That's gonna be finer sensitivity. This uh, MPP technology is really good, but I would not say it is as great as something like AES technology. Now, um, that technology is actually found in something like the Dell Inspiron 14 2 and one for example. Um, and I have a, a video on that if you wanna check that out. But I would say overall with the glossy display and the MPP protocol Asus 2.0 pen, this is a good, uh, good, uh, pen compatible display. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Asus ZenBook S16, head down in the description below, click those links if you do make a purchase. I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I'm so grateful when you all use those links. Okay, speakers. What do we got going on for speakers here? We do have downward facing speakers that are coming out of the side here on the device. Very similar to like the MacBook Pro. Uh, my wife has a 14 inch MacBook Pro, also similar to the uh, Galaxy Book 4 and 5s. They have speakers coming out of here. Let's give you a sample so you can hear for yourself what that sounds like. Okay, now let's talk about the battery life because I think that's what makes this laptop specifically a game changer, okay? Like, I'm not kidding. Um, 19 hours and 56 minutes, and that's on the conservative side. I saw some reviewers saying it gets up to like 23 to 26 hours. That's just crazy. I, I can't see that really being possible with real world use. But I saw about 19 hours and 56 minutes uh, for productivity, stream video playback about nine hours, 19 hours and 42 minutes, and then eight hours and 22 minutes of Photoshop and about six hours and 45 minutes of Premiere Pro. That is on par with what I've been using here, the Apple MacBook Air 15 inch for my on the go device. When I'm like traveling on airplanes, I need long battery life to edit while I'm on the go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually do some editing on this device and I'll release kind of a months later review and kind of give that data on how on the go friendly video editing is with this device. Big old display, big old trackpad. Um, it has everything that it needs. I just haven't had enough time to fully test all those different elements of it. Let me know if you want me to test that because I'd be happy to do so. But stellar battery life right off the bat and that's only a 73 watt hour battery. So pretty, pretty stinking awesome. Okay, now before we get into the performance benchmarks, let's talk about the thermals of this device. So I take a 4K clip, put it in Premiere Pro, export out at full quality 4K. YouTube settings. That saw about 36 to 40 decibels of fan noise 
at 72 to 75 degrees Celsius. And that export took about four minutes and 31 seconds. So really spot on. Um, this doesn't have a dedicated GPU. There was laptops I was seeing this year, 2024, that were in the high two minute range with dedicated GPUs. So this is at a 431 on battery power, five minutes and seven seconds for that 4K export time. That's a nine minute 4K clip, really solid results. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into the full benchmark results. Let's talk about the specs first. We have the Ryzen AI9HX370, same CPU that is found in the ASUS ProArt P16 and the PX13. Uh, we also have integrated Radeon 890M graphics and then 32 gigs of RAM solid components, it's just lacking a dedicated GPU, which we might not even need based on your needs and based on these performance benchmarks you're about to see. Now going ahead and jumping into Geekbench, solid performance in both Geekbench single core and multi-core. Cinebench did show as amazing results, but still solid, uh, still really good scores. Now going ahead and looking at Photoshop, 6,773, just below the 7,000 mark. That is gonna be great, especially when you look at this device. Um, you want to have 32 gigs of RAM if you're a Photoshop user, if you're a Adobe Creative Suite user, Adobe InDesign, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, definitely 32 gigs of RAM. And of course, in Premiere Pro for playback and um, just being able to work in the program without having bottlenecks. If you're a multitasker, you know, you have Gmail open, you've, you're searching the internet for research, you're listening to music, you're editing, or you're uh, working in Photoshop or in Design or Illustrator, that RAM is going to be absolutely crucial. Okay, now let's take a look at video editing. Now, if you're somebody who's using uh, 1080p or 4K, you're gonna have no problems with this device. Though it doesn't have a dedicated GPU, you're gonna get zero drop frames for 1080p and zero drop frames for 4K, uh, excuse me, 10 drop frames for 4K full quality playback, which is essentially zero. However, looking at 6K B-RAW, I saw 11,203, and all of these tests are out of 16,177 frames in each project. And so for me, I would not use this for 6K B-RAW. Um, at this moment, I need to do my testing, my further testing where I take an, an unboxing and I edit it on the device on battery power to see how it does. But based on my just basic testing, it doesn't look like it'd be very 6K capable. Now the export time, like I said, for 4K is four minutes and 31 seconds. Uh, you can see the comparison chart coming up on the screen, 4K versus other laptops, 4K export versus other laptops. But then also you gotta look at the 6K B-RAW export. That's 24 minutes and 38 seconds. The export time for the ZenBook S16 is good. It's the playback where I'm worried. Your actual editing experience, will that be smooth? Will it not be? I think one of the challenges, it comes with this tiny little charger block. It's a 65 watt hour charger block. So I don't know, maybe if you had like 140 watt charger block, USB-C, you'd be able to pull more power. But USB-C bottlenecks, um, I think around 120 or 140 watts of charger push through. Don't quote me on that. So I don't know if boosting the charger block would do anything. These are things I'm thinking about now during the review, dang. All right, so we're definitely gonna have a one month later of this device um, because there's so many kind of unanswered questions that I need to dig deeper on. And I wanted to get this review out because I know a lot of you have been curious about this device, but I'm gonna be taking a bunch of notes and having a one month later for this device. So keep that in mind, ask your questions so we can do more research on this device. That's why I like doing a main review off the bat and then questions could get answered moving forward in the future. So comment below right now, I wanna get your questions answered in the month later review. Overall, takeaways from this device, the pen sensitivity is way better than expected. The uh, heavy to light stroke tails off very nicely. It doesn't just end with like a rounded circle. So the screen sensitivity is excellent. I'm really liking the panel. I love how thin and light the device is. The keyboard and trackpad are phenomenal. And the battery life is absolutely stellar. So punch for punch, I think this could be a great device. If you're deciding between this or the P16, click or tap the screen here for that head-to-head -head review. It will be out at some point and you'll be able to watch that. If you wanna make a purchase, links in the description below. So make a purchase through those. Helps my channel stay alive, keeps more helpful content coming your way. Super grateful when y'all use those links. I'll see you in the next video.